Good morning, everybody. Today's scheduling assembly is taking place in your colony period. It is relevant to all of our underclassmen who will be still in the building next year as we participate in our scheduling course requests for next year. Just keep in mind graduation requirements. You need 21 credits in specific areas to graduate with a high school diploma, four English, four math, three social studies, three science, one fine art, health and PE, and five more electives on top of that. These graduation requirements, you'll be working with your counselor. These are the ones that are pre-populated in your scheduling worksheet that you received this morning in Homeroom. Uh, in terms of the course options book, what are other courses? If you want a better course description, please visit our online option book to find specific information about courses and any of their prerequisite requirements. Uh, so now take a look at your scheduling worksheet that you were just handed. Uh, if you take a look at how it's laid out, on the left-hand side, there is a list of class periods. That is the number of class periods. Not all classes run the same length, so you have to pay attention to this. Uh, your credits are over on the right side. Keep in mind, you have to schedule for five credits to be considered full-time. And uh, we ask that you take five and a half credits throughout your course of your school day. Um, and no less than five classes each semester. So you can't pick up more classes in fall semester so that you can have less classes in the spring. You know, you still need to take five classes throughout. Uh, those classes, you we, on an eight period day, you carve out one for lunch. That's why the table's set up the way it is. You need to fill in the electives that you want. If you are in CVCC, there should already be a, a checkbox in the considering CVCC block. If you are a sophomore looking to go to CVC, please check that box right now. It says you're heavily considering it. If you're considering CCP courses, please mark that box. If we already have recognized that you've earned your PE waiver, this is for typically your sophomores through juniors, um, you participated in two seasons of sports or you participated in two marching band seasons, you've already earned that X. Um, if you're currently in your second season, there is no X, but if you're gonna get your PE waiver, you can put in an X on, on that spot if you already earned your fine art. This helps when you meet with your counselor to let them know that you already, you know, what you're planning to do and what you've already taken. Uh, the course is now on the bottom. You know, the, the top of the paper, were your primaries. If we can't schedule your primaries because of low enrollment or low requests, we end up not running that course. We need to have a list of alternatives and I would put them in the order that you want them. So give us a course code, course name and how many credits worth so that we can substitute them in place of another class um, if it doesn't run or there is a conflict in your schedule down the road. One of the best ways to kind of keep in mind what are you gonna put in for those rolling classes at the bottom there is make your four-year plan. So your freshman, and sophomore classes on the back of your scheduling worksheet, your page looks like this, it's the four-year plan. And what you wanna do is spell out those elective classes that you're gonna want. Keep in mind that you only need three histories and three sciences, you can take more than, than that amount. What they would be considered at that point are electives. So when you need five credits of electives to graduate, taking a second science class or a, or a second history class in a given year simply um, would be counted towards your elective side. So keeping the four-year plan in mind, what are classes you want to get to at some point before you graduate, that will help you figure out what those alternatives are if you don't get into the class you request for next semester. And at this time, I'm going to hand this over to Mr. Drypolcher, who will talk you through the rest of the procedures. Well, thank you, Mr. Dietrich. Uh, my name is Kyle Drypolcher. I am one of the college and career counselors here for juniors and seniors, last names P through Z. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit moving forward about some of the, the other details about scheduling. Um, so our schedule change policy, just so everybody understands, scheduling changes will not be accommodated unless there is, you know, we say three reasons here, academic misplacement, meaning you're in a course um, that is not a good fit for you academically. Maybe that's an honors class and you, you're, you should be more at the academic level. Those things do happen. Uh, a change might be made at that point if, if we deem necessary. A technical error or glitch in our system. Sometimes the computer might leave a class out or, or, or uh, might add in something that, that isn't right. So if that's a, a situation like that, yes, we can make a change. Or if there's a scheduling conflict, and, and you'll know if there's a scheduling conflict because your counselor will talk to you in, in the spring, uh, probably in April or May, meaning that there might be two classes offered at the same time or that not everything you've requested will fit. 
So those are the, the main three reasons that we will allow you to change your schedule. Um, so now is the time to plan and read through those course descriptions. Um, make sure you are selecting classes that you intend to take. Um, don't put things down now that you have no intention of taking and, and then come back to, to us maybe in the summer or, or fall saying, oh, I don't want to take these classes anymore. Uh, we, we build the master schedule around our, our scheduling requests. And, and so we want to make sure you're doing this appropriately and accurately so that, you know, when we hit the ground running uh, fall of next year, um, everything is as it needs to be. Okay, the honors diploma. So for those of you who are uh, seeking an honors diploma, there are a variety of honors diploma options, and you can find these in the academic options section of our new course catalog, which is online. Um, talk with your counselor with your, during your one-on-one -on -one meeting to ensure you're, track, you're on track, excuse me, to earn an honors diploma. Uh, we as counselors will be meeting with our caseload uh, coming up here in, in the next month um, to go over and review your, your schedule. So if you have questions about what honors diploma you might want to uh, strive for, and, and examples might be the traditional academic honors diploma, there is an art honors diploma, there's a career technical honors diploma, um, and a STEM, science, technology, engineering, math honors diploma, to name a few. Um, check with your counselor and make sure you're on track because those requirements for honors diplomas do differ from the graduation uh, requirements that Mr. Dietre referred to earlier. Uh, athletic eligibility, just to review, um, you must be passing five one credit courses or semester equivalents, semester classes um, to be eligible. PE courses will not count towards that total. So just be sure if you're in a PE class that doesn't count towards those five classes. The Eligibility is based on the academic quarter that precedes your, your athletic season, okay? So an example might be if I play a spring sport that starts in third quarter, uh, my eligibility for third quarter would be based on my grades and, and uh, classes from second quarter, okay? So to keep that in mind, you must maintain a 1.5 GPA to participate in your extracurricular activities or sports. Um, we're hoping everybody does that, but just so you have a frame of reference, um, summer courses and grades do not count towards eligibility. Um, these might be rarer cases where uh, maybe you're a, a CCP student, which we'll cover shortly, or you take a summer class. Those classes do not count towards eligibility. So just, just be mindful that this has to take place in either the fall or spring semesters of our calendar. Uh, College Credit Plus. Uh, is, is a dual enrollment program that allows students to earn both high school and college credit through uh, taking college coursework. The program is open to all high school students and, and students in the state of Ohio grades 7 through 12. Um, we will have a, a meeting on Monday, January 31st at 7 p.m. in the high school auditorium. If you are interested in taking CCP courses next year or if you are a current student who takes CCP classes, this is a yearly requirement for all students who want to take place or, or would like to take part in the CCP program for the 2022-2023 school year. Um, you know, one thing on, on top of that to, to keep in mind is students must meet all admission requirements of any institution or college uh, that they attend. We will get into far more detail about that on January 31st. So please mark your calendar and make sure you're in attendance uh, if that's your plan for next year. Uh, the Cuyahoga Valley Career Center, or CVCC, um, for those of you who are going into your junior, um, particularly your junior year, but maybe some of you into your senior year, uh, it is a two-year program. There's 28 career technical programs. Um, our students who are juniors um, typically start the first year. It's a two-year commitment, so junior and senior year. Um, Sophomores are currently the ones who are in the application process because you're applying for next year. So the next visit for our applicants is February 10th. Um, if you are an applicant, you will go on February 10th. So the applications are due on January 28th. So, so coming up soon uh, this week. If you are interested or you're not sure, please see Ms. Berenger uh, down in the guidance office if you're interested. Uh, Acceptance letters will go home uh, directly from the Career Center in mid-March, so you'll find out if you've been accepted into your program of choice. You would want to put your schedule together for you juniors, listing your program as a five-period block, because as a junior, you spend five periods at the Career Center. As a senior, you will spend um, four periods. There are five periods at the high school. 
Uh, as counselors, we can make those adjustments to your schedule. So please, if you have questions, or you're not sure how that's gonna look, come see your counselor. Um, and specifically when we meet one-on-one uh, -on -one during those times, we can help you cater your schedule to accommodate those programs. Okay, National Honor Society. Um, for those of you who are, are striving for this, this group, this, this um, national organization, uh, one change this year for National Honor Society, or rather for next year, uh, the cumulative GPA for students has gone up to a 3.75 or above, uh, used to be a, a 3.6. It has, it has moved and been bumped to a 3.75, so just take note of that. If you have an older sibling or, or somebody else who, who, who has done it in the past, that's one uh, pretty significant change. Application process takes place at the beginning of junior year. So for you rising juniors, you probably wanna make sure, uh, as soon as we get back in August next year, you wanna make sure you understand your timelines, uh, figure out what, what is needed and, and when. Um, strong emphasis on academics, service and leadership activities. Those are the, the cornerstones of National Honor Society. If you do have any questions, the advisor is uh, Mrs. Owens or Mrs. Williams. Uh, so please make sure to touch base with either one of them if you have any more specific questions. A new course offering here at the high school, uh, Honors Advanced Art. Um, this is a class that's open to juniors and seniors, uh, deals strongly with or, or pertains to studies of media and design, uh, incorporates drawing, painting, ceramics, sculpture, and printmaking, or print, uh, printmaking, excuse me. Um, the prerequisites are intermediate art 2D or intermediate art 3D or recommendation of an art teacher. So a good thing, especially for some of these new courses, is make sure you have those prerequisites before you put it on your scheduling sheet. Um, so we don't have to make that change later if you, you put it down, but you don't have the prerequisite needed. Okay, the next steps. Uh, you want to obtain teacher signatures for, for AP courses or honors courses that are not pre-populated. Or, or any electives that, that you don't have in there. And, and again, as counselors, we will talk with you um, ahead of time with our meetings to get the, what you need on those sheets. Have your parent sign the scheduling worksheet so that we know we're all on the same page and, and everybody at home is in agreement with your course selections. The scheduling worksheets are going to be due in the colony period on Wednesday, February 2nd. And, um, you want to make sure uh, you get those to your homeroom, yeah, county or, or homeroom teacher who, who is the same. So uh, we will send a reminder out about that, about getting those worksheets in, but you want to get those in on February 2nd. Um, you will have, again, individual meetings with your school counselors. We're trying to hit that point home. So uh, when that time comes, make sure you, you, you come with questions, you come with ideas, um, and, and you, you use those five to 10 minutes is, is what our meeting times are to make sure we have your schedule set for next year. If you have questions about classes, um, ask the teachers if you have questions. That's what they're there for. They are, in many cases, the folks obviously recommending you in your core courses. So make sure you understand uh, the, the classes and expectations before scheduling. And that is, is essentially the end of our, uh, our presentation here for scheduling. And thank you so much.